So we're just sketching on this. That means you didn't really need graph paper. So x equals 5. What does x equals 5 look like? Everybody show me with your arm. Okay. So we're kind of debating if you look around. So it says all x values are 5. How do we know that that's the graph for x equals 5? 5 Yeah, it's because all x values on that line are 5, right? The y values vary, so that could, let's just make up a coordinate pair for that point. Um, I don't know, how about you? Brooklyn, how about you? Yeah, sure. Kat, how about you on this one? Oh, um, five, negative six. Okay, so you get the point. Like, no matter where on that line I choose a point, it's going to have a, an x-coordinate of five. So that kind of helps you think through, hey, it must be a vertical line since all x values are five. And then, kind of by contrast, what do you think that line looks like? The y equals negative four. If x equals something is vertical, this has to be horizontal, right? So y equals negative 4 is going to go through horizontally through that line. And let's just make up two coordinates just to illustrate and make sure we're clear. So how about you, Dawson, for this point? Just make up a coordinate pair for that negative 4. So it has to be negative 4 for the y. Good. And how about you, Caleb? Uh, for the other one? Yeah, for the other one. Three negative. Good. And again, we could go infinite points on that line, and they would all have a y-coordinate of negative four. We are going to study, it's going to be a little while, but we're going to study a whole bunch about vertical and horizontal lines, but we're going to call them asymptotes. And it's lines that other graphs approach as we go to infinity. So it is important to know that the formula, the equation for a vertical and a horizontal line. In fact, let's just quickly write special lines down on your notes under graph. I have the last thing we wrote was graphing basics, which I would consider this to be. because it will never look horizontal. <laughs> so a horizontal line is always going to be um, y equals something. And it's just I'm just going to put a number sign there. So it's just going to be y equals a constant. No variable. So there's not going to be an x in there because that would make it uh, then turn into a diagonal line. So it's just y equals some constant number. And vertical is always going to be x equals some number. When we get to that stuff that I was talking about, what we call asymptotes, it's a weird word, you'll be solving for the equations of the vertical and horizontal lines that the graph approaches. So it's not like just write it, it's solve for it and then graph it. For some reason, this seems to be something that students don't remember or I think they probably understand it, hopefully, but I don't think they remember it. So maybe look over this more than just right now.
Does it? It should be familiar, is it? You guys have studied this before, right? Okay. How is the homework that you just uploaded? Easy? <laughs> I wish I actually understood this part. Oh, that's good. The last two times I've been here. Last two times I've stared at it for an hour. An hour? By the way, so today, starting today, up till now, I have, since we've started the submission of your homework online, I've had it like this post for the day and then an assignment to post to. And I think it's going to work to just create the assignment and put all the resources on there. So the video, the notes, the examples, and just have it all in one place. So you should only need to look at one, click on one box on Google Classroom starting today. No, sorry, it's, it's late. So I'll talk to you individually. Yeah. Um, guys, if you have trouble submitting, you need to email me before, um, before class and let me know. Anyway, let's. I want to come back to the warm up now that we've written this down and um, use that. Well, actually, you know what? Let's just check it right now. Let's just get get that done, and then we'll check homework. All right. So this is review of last week interval notation for the in this case for just line number line graphs. And so remember, interval notation is a combination of parentheses and brackets, and they both mean separate things. We always start our interval with the lower number and end with the higher. And things like negative infinity, infinity, always go in the same place in our interval. They will not vary because they are the absolute biggest and smallest values. So in this case, we should have bracket. And remember I said to make your brackets squared off. This starts at 5 and goes to 12 but not including 12, so we need parentheses on that. Second one, bracket starts at 7, goes to 14, and parentheses, same thing, just different numbers on that one. Okay, next one, parentheses, negative 7, and it goes up to 1, with the bracket. And really this is the one that I wanted you to make sure you get correct because it's the one that students mess up more of the time. Where does this one start? Where does it start? The final interval, where does it start? Go ahead, Bianca. Yeah. Guys, the tendency for some people is to read this as the starting point, this closed circle. And because the arrow is pointing left, the tendency is to start it at 6 and then go to negative infinity. But that's not correct because negative infinity is the lowest number, so it always needs to go in the left position. So it needs to look like that. Remember that we're not putting letters like X's and variables into our intervals. It's numbers and infinities. That's it. Okay? And finally, another review from last week. Find the y-intercept. So this was stuff we talked about last class. For the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. What do we do for the x-intercept? That y to zero. Yeah. So in this case, you probably could, if you were clever, you probably could solve for the x-intercepts at this point, depending how much you've done with quadratics. But I didn't ask you to do that because we haven't talked specifically about that. But if I set x to zero, these four terms all are zero, and so we can ignore them. And all that we have left is 4 over negative 6, or negative 2 thirds. And that's your y-intercept. Remember to give it as a point. So 0, negative 2 thirds. Just curious, raise your hand if you got that one. Okay. How many of you, you just wrote, how many of you just put your hand up? Did you write it as a point? 
not just giving me the negative two thirds. But, okay. Make sure you're writing these as points since they are points on the graph. All right, any questions on the homework? You did some solving of inequalities and writing and interval notation, and then some intercept stuff. So any that you would like to check or do right now? There was one, actually there was a couple even ones that I gave you, so you couldn't check your answers on that. Um, let's just check the odd ones real quick and make sure that those of you who didn't are tracking well. So starting on 304, so you were um, solving first, and then graphing your solution, and then writing an interval notation. So I'll show you 305 just to check. I don't see the point in doing homework that you don't have any feedback on. So 305, should have got on A, B greater than or equal to negative 17 24 And I don't know the decimal for that. But your interval was bracket negative 17 24 comma infinity with the parentheses. Remember parentheses always go with infinities. Next one, y less than 8. So parentheses negative infinity comma 8 parentheses. And then c. k greater than 64. So parentheses 64 comma does anybody want to check 304 since it's not on here? Any of those that you have issues on? So feeling confident, that's good. Then 3.1 was just intercept stuff. We'll check the odds starting at 51. Directions on this said in the following exercises, graph using intercepts. So basically find them and then use those two points, connect the dots, etc. So set each one equal to zero, solve for the other. So there's your graph for 51. Intercepts were for the x-intercept, negative one zero, sorry, negative two zero. And for the y-intercept was 0, 6. And then 53. There's your graph for 53. Are you paying attention already? Yeah. Uh, 6, 0, and 3, or 0, 3. Because this is all hopefully going well, but let me know if it's not. You can talk to me individually, come in and get help, etc. This is review. But it has been a while for most of you, so it's okay if it's not 100% solid, but I hope it is. So let's get into today's work and scroll through here. Slope and writing equations. Again, this is kind of the end, a uh, little bit. We have a little bit more review after this, but we're getting there. What do you know about slope? Tell me some words that come to mind when you hear that word slope. A hill, okay. What about a hill? It slopes. Okay. <laughs> Graph. Graph? Because I see a lot of phones today. Come away, please. Back to the right. Yeah, there we go. Rise over run is what we think of as slope. And that's kind of a graph idea. I'll come back to that. When you're looking at a graph, rise is in the vertical direction. I kind of wish this arrow had another, or this line had an arrow down. Because rise does not just imply up, right? It can also be down. And then run is left and right, so x direction. 
So tell me the slope. Raise your hand when you can tell me the slope of that line. Don't shout it out. Just when you're there, put your hand up. Yeah, I can zoom it. Is that good enough? Okay. Alright, I have like three people, three hands. Let's get to one. Slope of that line. All right, those of you who know it, go ahead and say it. I heard one person say it. Everybody, just shout it out. It is not two over three. It's okay. We're all learning, right? Now I hear four over seven. I've heard negative three over five. I don't know if I've heard other stuff. All right, I'm going to zoom out, but I'll, I'll make the picture bigger since it's kind of too small. All right, so again, slope, we use the letter M. Rise implies both up and down, and run left and right. We do read graphs which direction, though. In terms of the X or the run, which way do we always read the graph? Left to right. Left to right, just like you read a book. So you definitely want to go... I'll just mark it off here. We definitely want to go left to right for the X. So if we calculate that, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Or if we look at coordinates of this point and this point, we have negative 1 over to 5, which is 6, right? It's an interval of 6. Which, does that go on top or bottom, the 6? Because it's rise over run. What is left and right? It is run, right? So this is 6 on the run. Okay, how about the rise? That's vertical. It went from... Why did I put a point in the middle of nowhere? Are you guys like, what the heck is he talking about? Yeah. I'm not even in the right spot here. There we go. Okay. Now what's the run? <laughs> Five. How about the rise? Down three, right? So from one down to negative two. Is this little negative sign important? Yeah. Why? It shows that it's going down. It shows it's going downhill. Remember that a down from left to right, a downhill line better have a negative slope or it's wrong. Sorry about that mix up. Okay, so rise over run, negative three over five is our slope. How do you calculate that if you're just given points though? Like, instead of showing you a graph, if I just said maybe this pair of points, how would you calculate slope? Because you can't count it now on a graph. Try to take the same. Like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Yep, except for it's minus. But yeah, you got it. Good job. Okay. Um, we'll come back to that in a second. So right now, actually, let's just put it on your notes. For me, this is a new page. locked in your memory. There is no reason that you should have to look this up at this point. So this week I want you working on it. If you don't already have that memorized, work on it. 
my, my little caution there is be careful with those subtractions. That's where students mess this up. Like you, you can, if you don't have it memorized, you can copy the formula down. But if you can't subtract accurately, it's wrong anyway. So make sure that you're being careful with subtracting, especially with negatives. Okay, we'll add a couple more notes to this about special slopes like horizontal and vertical lines, etc. Um, but just for practice, let me move this down. Find the slope of that line. Guys, when you have a formula, you should start by writing it down. What is y2? Uh, second letter in the second group of points. Sure. The second number. Okay. So he's calling for y2. You guys agree? Is that actually the second point on the graph? If you graph these, negative 7, 4 would be somewhere over here. And negative 2, negative 3 would be somewhere down here. So left to right, which point is actually first? Seven, four. The second point that we're given. Does that matter? It doesn't. As long as you're careful, it doesn't. So he's going to call it 4 minus negative 3 and negative 7 minus negative 2. Okay, this is where I was talking about being careful with subtraction. What is 4 minus negative 3? It's 7. And what is negative 7 minus negative 2? Negative 5. Negative 5. Remember those double negatives mean plus. Don't say positive because neither, well, the denominator didn't become positive, but it was addition, right? So double negative means addition. Guys, slope is an important thing in some of the work we do. We're going to call it a different name called rate of change, right? It's, we'll call it average rate of change because we'll be doing it between different points. But that's something that you'll need to get used to hearing. Um, back to this then. Remember the slope of a horizontal line is zero and a vertical line is undefined. Why would that be true for each one? So why is the slope of a horizontal line Flat straight line. They're all straight lines if we're talking about a line. There's no rise. There's no rise, right? The numerator doesn't go up or down. So if you have a zero numerator, what is the total quotient? Zero. It's got to be zero, right? So let's write what we just said. Horizontal m equals zero over some number. Well, zero divided by something is just zero. How about vertical? It's undefined because there's no like horizontal base point, I guess, to base the rest of the point on. Okay. Yeah, right. Undefined because it's infinitely up and down. Well, we could we could say take a section of it, and you're right. Like he's saying, a vertical line goes infinite in both directions vertically. We could though take a little piece and check how much change it was from one point to another, right? So let's keep the you're, you're on the right track. What where do you get undefined in math? Undefined by zero. Yeah, say that again. When you divide by zero. When you divide by zero, right? So what is the change horizontally when we don't go left or right? It's, that's why we have a divide by zero situation, right? So don't call the slope no slope for a vertical line. No slope is not the same as undefined. And sometimes that gets mixed up. So on your notes, Horizontal m equals 0 over some number, which equals 0. Vertical m equals some number over 0, which is undefined.
underneath the word slope, I want you to put the phrase that we'll probably use more often, which is rate of change. Rate. Rate meaning how quickly is something changing, right? Those of you going on to AP Precalc next year, which I hope is a bunch of you, you use rate of change a lot to define something called concavity, which describes the behavior of graphs when it switches from opening down or up to the opposite. And it's an important feature using that phrase. So it's an important one to know. All right, that's kind of slope. Um, we're going to skip that for now. Slope intercept form, what would I write in the circle? A lot of you know it by what it actually is rather than by its name. Slope intercept form. Anybody know? Starts with y. Yeah, good. Sometimes it's also b plus mx. That's just rearranging the terms, but it's still the same thing. What does B represent in that slope-intercept form? That's the y-intercept, right? The start value, the place it crosses the y-axis. And of course, we've been using M now for the last few minutes for slope. So slope and intercept, you can see why that, uh, why that works out in the name. We are going to write this from point slope. How, have you, how many of you remember point slope? Yeah? Go ahead, Pedro. Let's put it on here, too. I'm ready whenever you are. Y2 minus X1. You're off a little. <laughs> You're off a little. You said Y2 minus X or something? It starts with y also. So y1 minus x1. No? No. <laughs> it's okay. Good try. Yeah? Something like that. Yeah. All right. So you started off good. So y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. Good job, guys. Thanks for putting that in here. Okay. So x1, y1 is just some point on the line. I guess I should probably add that is a point on the line. y and x are your independent excuse me, your dependent and independent variables, and then m, of course, is slope. This is something that gets overlooked, but it's quite a handy form, honestly. If I said write an equation for a line, this is actually the faster way to write the equation for the line, this point slope. Most people want to go to slope intercept because that's the graphable form of line, uh, but it's not as easy to write equations in that form I'm going to change, I'm going to write this down, I'm just plugging me the way it looks like that. Okay. So we're going to get into writing equations for a line. Do you guys need practice with this? Uh, not that. This, if I gave you, I'll just write it bigger. Let me know if we need to practice this. I will give you time, but... Identifying slope and y-intercept in that. Do we need a lot of practice with that, or are we pretty solid? Five seconds. Raise your hand when you can tell me the slope. Okay. Kennedy, what is it? Yeah, we're good. Okay. All right, moving into writing equations of lines. So we're going to write it in slope-intercept form. 
but we're going to use point slope form to do it. Okay. So if I give you two points, how do you find the equation for the line? This is kind of bringing all this point or uh, slope stuff together. You guys remember how to do that at all? All right. Tell you what, let's work through this example, and then I'll, then we'll write down a stepwise process briefly, and then give you a chance to try it. So, two points. Where those points could come from a graph. Those points could come from a story. Maybe they're given as data instead of specifically as coordinate pair in parentheses. These points could come from a table. Anything, right? I'm not always necessarily just going to give you two points. So, does everybody, can everybody see them or do I need to make that bigger? We're good? Okay. All right. So we're writing the equation of the line. Step one, since we have two points, we don't need to identify them, but we need to find the slope. So, negative 2 minus negative 1 over 2 minus negative 3. All right, what's negative 2 minus negative 1? Negative 1 and 2 minus negative 3? Five. So our slope is negative one fifth. Okay. Next, it says use point slope form first. So that was y minus y one equals m x minus x one. So y one and x one are just coordinates of one of those two points. Which which one do you want to use? They're both fine. I would personally have a preference, but you guys pick. Which one do you want to use? Parker, pick a point. Okay, why did you pick that one? That's the one I would have picked. Do you, you don't know why you picked it? Okay. Guys, I'm going to recommend picking ones that are positive or at least have positive coordinates as much as possible. It just saves you on the, on the sign errors. So we plug in Y1, M, and X1. So this is now going to look like y minus, what is y1? Negative 2. M was negative 1 fifth. X, what was x? x1? What x went with that y? 2. So x minus 2. Okay, I want you to go back to slope intercept form and just make sure you're aware. It is always subtraction. It says y minus. When you're plugging in, make sure you put a minus. I could now write this as what? If I simplified that, what could I write it as? Y plus 2. You need to see it as minus negative 2. Okay? Even though we're about to write it as Y plus 2. Okay, all I'm doing is distributing the 1 fifth. That's all. Negative. No, because, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, now what? We are, do you see how we're really close to slope intercept form? I mean, I see our slope right here. Uh, we did up above, but I see it now as mx. So how do we get that last step worked out to be slope intercept form? We have one more thing to do. Say it loud. Just subtract two. Well, in this case, we have a little bit of a fraction to deal with, but... 2 fifths minus 2. I would just convert 2 to 2 fifths. How many fifths is 2 holes? It's 10 fifths. So this is 2 fifths minus 10 fifths, which is negative 8 fifths. And now we're in slope intercept form. Ready to graph if I ask you to graph this. So again, it's Hopefully this is a pretty easy process. It's not always going to involve fractions, but we've been doing a lot with fractions, so I'm not worried about that. All right, so back to the yellow. To write the equation 
or a line. This time we're going to say pick two points because we may not always be given those points to work with. So make sure you pick strategically. Guys, if you can pick only positive coordinates, that's a good choice. Second is find the slope. I'm going to say slope this time, and then just as a reminder, if you want to write this here. Okay, probably a little bit new stuff on this step. Pick one point, x1, y1, plug it and the slope into point slope form. finally get y by itself. What did we call that last week? You guys struggled with it a little bit. Getting a variable by itself, what did we call that? Isolating or solving for that variable. I just didn't want to write that here because that was kind of an issue last week. So Get y by itself. Okay? Good, that's, that's the process. I still see people writing, so I'm going to give them just a second. turn a couple minutes what do you think like five probably five minutes would be enough huh so go ahead and work on that till about 8 55 
You've done this before? Uh, my situation is a little bit weird. I did algebra one in grade, like three four so. Like on my credit, so I went to geometry last year. Just like I'm just this is like some like gaps that are like I don't understand. Like this is one. Um, the rest I understood like from the homework. So, so are you a sophomore? So that was, it's probably been two years ago that yeah, this stuff, because usually this kind of stuff comes up pretty early in the algebra course. So I'm not like, so Okay. Well, let me know. So it's like two and next two? Well, number one, you have a two and a one. And it's like whatever you pick, you want it to be the same. Because it has to be the x and y coordinates from one to one. Oh. So I wrote it as x1 and y1. But you need to choose. So you pick which point you want to call one. So, did you make this stuff in? Wait, oh, wait, wait. It's my, this is plus three. 
All right. Better take good notes then. Kennedy, did you hear me? What? I said you better take good notes then. All right. Pick up. Pick two points. Well, we've already been given the two points, so we don't need to do too much with that. So find slope. Uh, we're going to go negative three minus negative four. All it is is the rise, the change in the y coordinates, right? One minus negative two for the for the run. Negative three plus four is one. One plus two is three. So there's our slope. Next, plug one of those points with the slope into point slope. So y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. That's point slope form. That is the equation of a line. It's just a little bit different looking than what you're used to. So y minus the equal sign stays put. X minus all that red stuff is part of the formula. I don't have to think about it. I just copy that part down. And then we're plugging in a point and the slope. Well, the slope is here. It's one third. Okay, what is y1? I guess it depends which point you pick, but I would go with negative 3. And what is x1? It's positive 1. Good. So the blue is the stuff you substitute. The red is the stuff that's already there. Done. Okay, this now becomes y plus 3. Why is this not working? y plus 3, thank you. All right, distribute your third, and we're here. Okay, last step said solve for y, or get y by itself. So all you need to do is subtract 3, right? Subtract 3 from both sides. Well, what is a third minus... Well, negative a third minus three. Right? Negative one third minus three is negative ten thirds. Or if you want to say negative three and a third, that's not ideal, but it's okay. How'd that one go? Okay. All right, I'm going to write it over here. Negative. Negative one third minus minus nine thirds, right? Three equals nine thirds. So three holes is nine thirds. Subtracting nine thirds gives us ten thirds. All right. Next, same thing. Find your slope. We're already given our points. So we don't need to worry about picking the accurate points. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. 1 plus 4 is 5. So there's our slope. I know this is all fractions, but like that's okay. Just think through it. Here's point slope form. If you're following your notes, we didn't have to pick two points, they were given. We found the slope, now we're on this step three. Pick one point and the slope and plug them in. Which point should we use? Negative three and one. Okay. Okay, y minus x minus, those stay in your formula or in your equation. 
and we plug in y1 and we're going to go negative 5 and 1 and the slope was negative 2 fifths. So the blue again is what we substituted in. Okay, continuing y plus 5 is negative 2 fifths x plus 2 fifths this time. Okay, we're adding because it's double negative there. Now we need to subtract 5. So minus 5. How many fifths? Since we're dealing with fifths, how many fifths is 5 whole? That is taking off 25 fifths, right? So 2. So 2 fifths minus 25 fifths is negative 23 fifths. All right. So, and again, if you did decimals, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that, but if you did, this would be negative 0.4x and then minus 4 point, what is that? 6 minus 4.6. Okay. And after this, to like actually solve it, you just put brackets around the whole thing. We're not solving right now. We're I just, know, but if you require well, He's asking if we solved. If we solved, we would have to have a value for y. Like something would have to be here. Either more of this kind of stuff or uh, maybe just a number there. But yes, if you, if you had something like that, you could multiply by 5 to get rid of the fractions. Yeah. So how's this going? <coughs> yeah, let's do it. Everybody sketch the graph for that. Turn it into a decimal, that'd be my suggestion. Well, 23 divided by 5. How many times, no. How many times does 5 go into 23? Yeah, 4 point something, right? Sketch the graph. You have 30 seconds. Sketch the graph. When you're sketching, Orion, your thing that you just said, negative 4 point something, that's fine. All right, what is the y-intercept? Yeah, it's negative 23 fifths, which is negative 4.6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, somewhere down here, put a dot for your <laughs> y-intercept. Okay, what's the slope? From there, we do what? Down to over 5. Okay? So... I'm going to have to go down to there, and then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so somewhere like, it's hard to do it from the side, but somewhere like that. And there's our line, roughly, right? Roughly. How do you determine which fraction to start with? Well, what do you mean by start with? He asked what, how do you determine which fraction to start with? Well, I mean, like, you place that first point if you had... Negative 23 over 5. Yes. Why couldn't I just choose negative 2 over 5? Okay, so let's get real clear on this. This is huge. Well, obviously it's massive, but like, what's the difference? I'm telling you right now. I'm oh. saying this is really important to understand. That's what I mean. So, do you see how this equ equation in green lines up with mx plus b? Right? So, out of M and B, which one is the slope? Yeah, it's M, right? So, B is where we start. So, it wasn't like a pick. It was, oh, this is in this form, so it has to be this number. Good. Good job for asking. How many of you graphed it correctly? 
Good. Uh, just as a check, go graph this one. It's been here the whole time. Probably because it used to be a projector. Alright. So we have an equation that we wrote. And if I say continue on and please graph that. Right now we're just sketching graphs. We're not specifically graphing. So what is the slope in that equation? It is one third, and where does this graph start? Okay, so m is one third, our starting value, or our y-intercept is negative ten thirds, or which is negative three and one third. So one, two, three, and a third, somewhere here. Our slope is up one over three. So from there to the next almost line and then over three so on mine that's the roughly the shape of that line okay just as a review how would you graph this is also a line this is standard form Graph that one. While we're on the graphing mode, gra go ahead and graph that one. It's kind of like if you're forgetting this, it's, it's what you did in your homework over the last four days. So you can graph with intercepts. So for the y-intercept, set x to 0, you get 4y equals 5, or y equals 5 fourths, which is the point 0, 5 fourths. Okay, x-intercept, set y to 0, and you'll get 3x equals 5, or x equals 5 thirds, or the point 5 thirds comma 0. When you go to sketch this, so just put two points, that's all you need for a line. So 5 thirds is 1 and 2 thirds, so roughly there. And then 5 fourths is 1 and a fourth. I should have spread this out a little bit more. So roughly there, and then there's our line. Right? So solve for the intercepts. You could also isolate y, and now you have slope-intercept form. It, but it'll give you the same line, so I think that's more work. I can show you how to do it. 3x plus 4y equals 5. If we want to get this y by itself, what do we need to do? Subtract 3x. Get rid of 3x. And then what? Divide by 4. I think it's good to show it all the way across. And look at that. There's our y-intercept that we already solved for. And here's our slope. So that's the same line. Either way. I think this is faster. You can a lot of times solve for y-intercepts and x-intercepts, with, especially with linear. You can solve for them in your head. Good to show it, but just illustrating that the math part isn't that complicated. So, how many of you got that graph? Okay. Guys, when I asked that question, how did you do? Did you get it? Did you get it? If you're consistently saying no, you need to come get help. We are not too many days away from our first assessment that's going to cover all this stuff. Solving with fractions is one of the biggest things on there. Graphing intercepts, writing equations for lines, and we will also have systems, which is what we're going to study next time. Okay? Uh, just to give you a heads up about what that means, this is an example of a system. I don't know, 
I'm just making it up. And you solve for both x and y at the same time, okay? We are, though, so that's still Algebra 1 review, and that will be the last thing that is Algebra 1 review for this unit for most of you. The next thing after we study this, which will be like half a class period, is we're going to add also a third variable, and this is where you get to like, I guess you'd say this is the Algebra 2 version. So three variables, now we have to have three equations, like that maybe, okay? So just showing you kind of where we're headed. Solve for x, y, and z, and the interesting thing about this, with two equations, like the thing I showed you at first, two variables, it can take maybe two or three minutes. This can make your work be like half to three-fourths of a page, depending on the problem. I mean, it's a lot more work. It's not hard, it's just more of it, more of the same. So it's cool, it's kind of fun. It's like a little bit more of a puzzle than these boring problems that some of the stuff we've been doing. So look forward to that. Um, homework for today. Um, I guess I didn't put it on there the same. So I'll just write it down. OS, open stack. 3.2, we are in 3.2 and 3.3 .3 at this point. <clears throat> Excuse me. Are you getting more comfortable finding the problems okay. in OpenStax? Yeah. I can post it, I, uh, I can post it and then just change it. Um, And then 3.3, let's do 183 to 193 odd. So you have the rest of class, which is about 14 minutes to get started. Please do that till the bell. <laughs> You know what, I think, I think on this, let's shorten this part up just a bit. <clears throat> let's just do 85 and 87 instead of all four of them. Let's just do those two odd ones. So, is it helpful if I post the links right now? Yeah. And then I'll update with the video and examples. Okay, I'll do that right now. Okay, yeah, I'll just do that right now. If you know how to get to this, then you should be doing that, but I'm posting it for those of you who can't. So the links are there. Again, I'll update this at lunch with all this stuff from class today. Okay, thank you.
But at least the things are there. I might have forgotten. Well, it's here. Now, what do I do? I got it attached. It should be attached. So it should be there with the missing? Yes. Do you think that's the case? Yeah. Or you So that means that's how I should bring it. If it's attached but not, but it says missing, that means it's like. Hang on. Hey guys, just as a uh, word about procedure for turning in homework, if you miss the deadline and you want to turn in work, like let's say you missed today and you want to turn it in on our next class, which is Wednesday, just tell me and I'll put it in here because I'm not ever going to go back and look through it again on Google Classroom. Okay, so you need to tell me and I'll just put it in when you show me. I just send it to you when it comes in. Yeah.